vital villages, thriving towns, life of the people. The life of the people. We are studying about how kingdoms were established, how they expanded. How did the kingdoms survive? Where did the kings get money from to maintain armies and fight wars? From the people. Kingdoms could not maintain themselves unless they had villages that were doing well. For villages to do well, they had to have farms, farming tools and good water supply that is irrigation. Life in the villages Kings built artificial lakes, canals, wells and tanks so that farmers could get regular water supply and grow good crops. When the farmers earned wealth, they could pay more tax and the king could get more money. There were mainly three different levels of people that lived in the villages. Rich people who owned lots of land, farmers who owned some land, landless workers and slaves. Other than farmers, there were also craftsmen like blacksmiths, potter, carpenter, weaver, etc. The landless people worked for any of the other groups to earn money. Think and discuss. What were the different kinds of people that lived in a village? Why were the kings interested in building extensive irrigation facilities for farmers? Vital villages, thriving towns, sources of information. The life of the people. How do we know how people lived in India so many years ago? How do we get the details of history from such a long time ago? From sources of history. Finding out about the past. We guess how people must be living from stories of that time. There are also paintings and carvings that give us an idea of what must be going on at that time. Inscriptions, books and records of other travellers give us more information too. Archaeologists have found wells, toilets, drains, some parts of walls and some pottery too. They still haven't found too many houses or palaces. If they were made of wood, thatch or mud, they wouldn't survive after so many years. Archaeologists have also found a lot of coins. Coins tell us a lot about a period. They give us an idea of what technology existed from the way the coin is made and what was considered important at the time too from the inscriptions. The earliest coins were punch-marked coins. The design was punched on to the metal. Inscriptions in temples and shrines also give us a lot of information. Most of the time, they mention gifts given to the temple by people in the community. That gives us an idea of the occupations and richness of the people. Craftsmen like weavers and painters and others must be doing well too. However, things like textile, leather, paintings cannot stand the test of time for so long. Normally, pottery is what archaeologists find as it lasts for long. We know about textile manufacturing centers from the inscriptions. Craftspeople and merchants formed groups called Shrenis. The Shrenis helped to train the people, get raw material and sell products. They also acted as banks. Think and discuss. What were Shrenis? What was their function? 